Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to be here and to talk with you today. Um, I'd firstly like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, uh, the Wajok Noir people, uh, the original placemakers for Perth. Uh, and that place attachment that was Ethan was talking about yesterday, we don't have to explain that to many of the communities that we have in our outer metro areas. Um, so I'm a planner, um, not an IT person. Um, does anyone remember these kind of computers? Slightly before my time, um, but I did play... Uh, <laughs> no, no, I'm joking, actually. I, I do remember some pretty old computers. Uh, I think I might have had a Commodore 64 or something like that, but I'm definitely not an IT person, so... Um, ideas are important. And we, we thought, well, how do we explain this placemaking concept and who does what in placemaking? And we thought, well, let's, let's uh, use a computer analogy with a hardware software. So we're guilty of uh, coming up with the analogy. It's not perfect, but it does help the way we think about things and also the ideas. So I just wanted to touch on that today. Um, so we've talked already about the hardware and the software. It might be a little hard to see those pictures here, but... Basically, the hardware picture, I stood on a beautiful day in West Perth and took a photo of a street that has pretty good hardware on it. So it's got bus lanes, it's got a cat bus, which is a free bus around the city centre, it's got chairs, it's got local businesses, um, pretty good paving, you know, all the hardware was there, but there were no people. I really tried hard to take a photo of people on that street, but they weren't there. The uh, picture on the uh, left, as you see it, is basically chalk uh, and letting kids go nuts on a street that's been blocked off and spending a couple hundred dollars on chalk and seeing what happens. In that case, all the local government did was to close that section of the road and did nothing else. And the community and the local businesses took ownership of that space. So for me, they're kind of good examples for hardware software at two ends of the extreme. Interestingly, the leadable example on your left there, uh, they've turned that idea of street for people, which uh, Rukshan mentioned earlier on, a really important concept in placemaking, and they've designed a town square that has been designed to be temporarily closed on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, when the community wants to activate it. So you can start with a really simple, cheap way of activating those streets and then spending the money on the hardware at a later stage. Sometimes I'm like, oh, this place making stuff, you know, it's bloody hard, how do I communicate this? But um, something that inspired me a few years ago is actually this is the future of local government. So I'm not sure if any people in the room were at this conference a few years ago about the future of local government. And they came up with a, an amazing, inspiring declaration about our roles as local government workers and as community members and as citizens. Oh, no worries. Um, so look it up. It's really inspiring. But the last line basically says, it's time to explore a new model of governance, one based on a re-energised civil society that draws on the strengths and re resourcefulness of people. Gives you a lot of scope to do this placemaking stuff in local government. Um, it might be a bit hard to read all the words here again, but... I wanted to talk about ideas and mindsets. So in local government, almost the reason for being is service delivery. Roads, rates, rubbish, all those services that we provide to communities that are incredibly important. But sometimes that service delivery model traps us in a way of thinking that is all about doing things for the community. We provide for the community and we do a really good job. And local governments have comparatively low budgets when you're talking about federal or state levels. Do an amazing job, but it's all about control and regulation. It's about centralised decision making. It's about the community expecting you guys to do it all. It's not my job to have a good community. It's your job as local government. That's the mindset that this creates. And it's all about consistency and efficiency, which is not wrong, but it's not the only way to think about it and can constrain you when you're thinking about place and place making. An alternative model that's based on enabling, and the minister used enabling a few times, which is good. The enabling mindset is about empowering and involving local communities, putting some responsibility back on them. 
to create great places, to create great communities. It's about enabling and incentivising. It's about sharing responsibilities. And it's about resilience and effectiveness. Imagine if there was no local government. For some reason, some catastrophe, cut your budgets by 100% overnight. What does that mean for our communities? Could we survive? Probably not. What we're doing at the moment is not very resilient. I was living in the UK uh, eight years ago and almost overnight, the local government's budget was cut by 30%. Terrible situation, but they really had to think, well, what does this mean? We, we can't do the same things we've always done. So an enabling mindset, it's a bit challenging, but it is a better way to think when you're talking about place and place making, because it's not just about what we can do as experts and professionals, but what the community can also do and how we can share roles and responsibilities. So you might say, well, that's all well and good in theory, but there are local governments already doing this, and a couple in Perth really stand out. But this council uh, in Northern England called Wigan Council, a fairly low socioeconomic area, came up with something that I think is quite revolutionary. It's called the deal. So this wasn't just a, a marketing campaign. They actually worked on a long period of time with their community to work out what are our roles and responsibilities, both as local government and as community members. Um, so, for example, some of the things that the uh, local government said, this is our role, this is our part of the deal, is about building services around you and your family, creating opportunities for young people, uh, listening, being open, honest and friendly, and believing in our borough. Community members, well, if you want to have lower rates, you need to recycle. You need to be part of this. We can't do it for you. You need to recycle and separate your rubbish. You need to get online and pay your rates online instead of coming in. Being healthy and active. Uh, supporting your local businesses, your local town centres, and believing in our borough. So both parties had to believe that this was possible, that they wanted to be in this place and contribute to it. The deal, it's a very simple thing but very powerful because it reframes the whole situation between communities and local governments and says, well, we can do things, but you can also do things as well. So let's work on that together. So the town team model, um, this actually started about 10 years ago, just for some people thought, well, let's just give this a go. There's been no central organisation. No, this is not a top-down approach. This is grassroots coming up. I was a volunteer in my local town team for five years before now I've become a full-time uh, town teamer. Um, it's very, very simple, breaking down silos. So instead of having a business association or a chamber of commerce and a residence association, why don't you just have one? So that's pretty much, that's as simple as it is. Have one organisation that's place-focused, could be a street, it could be a neighbourhood, it could be a suburb, depending on that local context. Businesses and residents working together because they can both bring different skills and attributes to the table. Businesses are very time poor, but they might have a venue for a meeting or they might be able to contribute some money for flyers or they can do things. The community members can do other things as well. So why don't we all work together instead of being in our separate community silos with businesses, residents, sporting groups, environmental groups, all doing their own thing, break down the silos in the community as well. And the only requirement to be a town team is a charter of behaviour. Every place is different, so a one-size-fits-all model is not going to work. It's only based on this charter of behaviour. The charter says about, or the principles basically are positive, proactive, apolitical and independent, inclusive, so particularly between different groups of people, but inclusive of the whole community. This is not a business association working for business interest, a residence association doing what they do. This is inclusive and working on behalf of the whole community. It's based on that concept of resilience and sustainability. And that's all facets of sustainability, environmental, economic, social and governance, cultural, I guess you could add to. And some basic principles, integrity, honesty and respect. So if a local group forms or would like to form and they sign up to that charter, you're a town team from our perspective. And we're here to help those people, inspire those people, provide resources. 
Um, it's 42 town teams strong now, including Christchurch in New Zealand, which came on board last week, and uh, Sydney and Canberra as well. It all boils down to make it easier for people to do things. Whatever they would like to do within the realms of legalities. <laughs> but uh, placemaking, make, if you want to see placemaking in your community get involved, we'll make it easier. Because they're not going to do it if it's hard work, takes two years to get an approval, or it's otherwise stressful. Make it easier and it will happen. This starts off as small actions, small number of actions, but over a period of time, the network's impact is going to expand hugely. So, it first started off maybe a couple of actions a year. Now we've got 34 town teams on this graph. We calculated 416 actions last year. So, once we've got 40 teams or 100 teams or 500 teams and they all do a few things each, the collective impact is big. Not so much at the hardware stage, but from a software stage it is. And I'll finish, um, this, is, this is our ethos, really, that local people are your best asset and often we don't use them or we ignore them or they're not included or empowered. So put some responsibility back, put, put some trust back in them, but also give them the support to be your placemakers. Thank you.